In the Kitchen with Daytime Blue Ridge, sponsored by FNS Building Innovations. Build smart, build right. Welcome back to Daytime Blue Ridge. I'm Rachel Lucas out here in the FNS Outdoor Kitchen. I'm here with Stubb from Cork Envy. Thank you so much for lending us your expertise oh, on a glorious course. day. So we have a couple of champagnes here. Uh, so people get afraid of champagne sometimes yeah, because they don't really understand it, right? And mm -hmm. it's expensive and they don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. So champagne was invented by, you, you have any clue who this is? No. No. No, I knew I knew so little. So a lot of people would say it was invented by Dom Perignon. That's not true. Like uh -huh. in the 1400s, uh, monks in Lemieux, France actually discovered that their wine was getting bubbles in it when they were making sacramental yeah. wine. Yeah. What happened is they had fermented the wine and because of the temperature, it didn't ferment all the way. So the yeast cells that are eating the sugar to make the alcohol didn't completely die. They just went dormant. So as temperatures rose in the spring, it would continue fermentation, hence the carbon dioxide that puts the bubbles in the bottle of wine. So champagne. champagne's a happy accident. It is a happy accident, yes. I and like Don that. Perignon did help uh, perfect it, uh, the, the process of it, of the traditional method. So that's where we think that he uh, invented champagne, but it was really just discovered. Now, right. I always get a little intimidated. I have to admit, I haven't opened very many of these. Okay, well, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take you through opening a bottle here oh. because this is a thing a lot of people are afraid of as well. Yes. So you, I took the foil off for you already, off the top mm -hmm. of the uh, cage here. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that little tab there mm -hmm. and you're gonna twist that six times, like six half turns. And how will I know here? When well, it's, the cage there we will go. actually open, there you go. Okay. All right, and a lot of times, a lot of professionals, you'll leave the cage on, but uh, probably at home, you wanna pull that cage off it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And you always want to point this away from other people <laughs> when you're doing it. So not this way. Not that way. No, this way. Absolutely. Okay. Correct. So taking the so cage that cage off. should come right You off look a little nervous. Uh, no. There we go. I'm a little nervous All right, now too. put your hand over the cork. Okay. And you want to squeeze it tightly. Like, okay. Sort of like this. Okay. And now what you want to do, instead of turning the cork and pulling, you just want to gently twist the bottle. And as you do that, <laughs> you should feel the cork coming out. Woo! There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> All right. Perfect. <laughs> Now, that's an awesome way. That was perfect right was there. Fun. You didn't spew anything. It was amazing, right? That was fun. Now, if you really want to be cool, uh -huh. you can open champagne another way. Uh -huh. So same thing here. I'm counting inside my head as I'm talking to you, and I'm pulling this off here. So what I have now, I'm pointing this bottle away from you. Uh-huh. Appreciate it. I'm going to saber this bottle. Have you ever seen this done before? <laughs> no. All right, so this no. is a traditional method for opening <laughs> champagne. You use a, 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 you know, a, a ceremonial sword. So okay. then to open this bottle, what we're going to do is we're going to take right along the seam, mm -hmm. and we're going to count one two, and three, we're gonna pop this cork, and the cork and some of the glass is gonna come right out. Oh, this is fantastic. Do you believe this is I happen? know, no, right, I'm here we so go. ready. You ready? All right, here we go. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> wow. And you'll generally get some fizz out of that, oh. and some people are worried about the glass shards in there. Yeah. The force of the cork coming out actually pushes all of the glass out of there. Once again, this is used for ceremonial things here. And I'm pouring this Champagne Tatinje, which I've brought oh. on the show before. Fancy. Uh, it's one of my favorites. You can usually find it for $50, sometimes less. Mm -hmm. uh, great celebratory. And once you open there is a champagne chanoine. Mm -hmm. I love the rosé also for celebratory for yes. uh, New Year's Eve. And that rosé, that's going to be made mm -hmm. out of Pinot Noir. This is primarily Chardonnay in here. So we get two in one. And that right there you can find for under 50 bucks. Oh, that's a great, Perfect. great deal. I'm all a fan of that. So we have some fun at affordable prices. I love it. Let's mm. give it a try. That's nice. Crisp. Little toasty mm -hmm. notes in there, nice mm -hmm. bread notes, beautiful champagne. Oh, thank you so much. You're very what welcome. What a great way to start the new year. You can find more information about this at corkenvy.com.